who are you? Well, I'm Elizabeth Thomas, I'm a PhD from the University of Kentucky. Um, I teach organic chemistry and also medicinal chemistry. Um, and I consider myself a Christian, that's my who. Um, what I do is I teach organic chemistry. But um, being a Christian means um, how I treat others and the expectations I have for myself, for others. Hmm. So, a professor of organic chemistry, <laughs> that's one of those fearful classes, you know. So I wonder, as a kid, did you see yourself as a chemistry professor? Or what, what did you want to do as a kid? Well, I grew up in a small rural area in Kentucky, um, so I didn't see a lot of organic chemists. Um, but I did do some um, work at Dow Corning, which is a manufacturing, my senior year in high school. But as a kid, I really liked Papa Smurf. You know, and I could make those potions, and I had a big cauldron, and I would put stuff in it, like twigs and different berries, and I would live in this pretend world, and I like drawing, um, organic chemistry, it's a lot of drawing. I used to say that I wanted to be an artist to my father, and he would say, artist star, pick another profession. <laughs> so, um, I think that that was some of my um, desire, and also I wanted to be a, a teacher at the time. I that's what I saw every day, people. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so when we think about, obviously, from Papa Smurf's potions <laughs> to now Professor of Chemistry, um, when you think about a dream job, what's a dream job for you? Well, I, I've had uh, several dream jobs, um, and I find that each dream job takes about 10 years of hard work to get to the dream, um, so you've got to keep going. Um, at some point, I wanted to design drug molecules, and I wanted to find a cancer cure, a cure for cancer, and I had no idea how I was going to do that, so I went into pharmacy, and I became a pre-pharmacy when I was probably like 20, and I started working in the pharmacy, and then I realized I'm just dealing with patients and um, insurance companies, and I asked what do I need to do? I want to, I want to make this drug insert, you know? And um, they said, well, you need to get a degree in organic chemistry. So I was, started doing summer research, and it was the most miserable experience of summer of my life <laughs> after going um, lifeguarding. That was, you know, outdoors all the time, and then you're in the lab. That was a, an adjustment. I ran away from it, only to come back another year and a half. And um, after... I guess uh, for 40, 50 hours a week for over a year, I, I started to love the lab. And um, then I ended up working with my master's degree at Eli Lilly. I started in combinatorial chemistry and neuroscience. And neuroscience was interesting, great therapeutic area. We were doing opioid research, but when a um, therapeutic area in cancer came up, I uh, applied for that and spent four years doing cancer research. This was actually um, for prostate cancer. And the funny thing is, I didn't know what a prostate was, <laughs> I'm like in my 20s. And, but prostate cancer, the prostate tissue is very much like the breast tissue, so a lot of the medicines would be similar. So that's, uh, oh, that's, that was my dream job at the time. But then I had my daughter, and, um, and I started really spending more time with people my daughter kind of pulled me into the world of people. I'm finding myself at Target, playgrounds, and um, I decided to go into education. And then that path, I had my high school teaching certification. I did an online thing and realized that if I'm going to teach, I need to be teaching organic chemistry, and I need to be teaching students how to really learn organic chemistry and, and, and be an organic chemist if they want, or go into medical school. So that meant that's the 10 year. Had to go back, get the PhD, six years, and um, for the dream job of teaching organic chemistry. Second dream job. <laughs> wow, a lot of hard work. When you think about your life, did um, anything happen in life to spur you onto this path? I mean, obviously, as a kid, you watched Papa Spur, but was there anything else that really spurred you on in this? Well, um, I like 
I was a runner, and I wanted to run like um, ultra marathons. I've run like five marathons. And um, so when you're a runner, you have to really pay attention to the foods you eat. I mean, a lot of the nutritional analysis and stuff. And so when I was um, taking organic chemistry, I actually started learning the structures of the fats. What is trans fat versus olive oils and good fats. And I started learning the structures of proteins. And all of a sudden it was really interesting to me. And so I think that's what made me like organic st structures real life application. Who knew that running would lead you right into <laughs> organic chemistry? Well, this is more of a challenging question. When you think about your life and you think about your call or purpose, if we were to literally boil that down into a sentence, what is, what is your call or purpose? Um, my call and purpose is really to serve others with the blessings that I have to give. Hmm. That would be my calling, to give back, to give. Do you see then that your, does your job or career align with that call? Absolutely. I mean, the students, um, they're on a path. We always refer to Wizard of Oz, the yellow brick road, and I'm a, I'm a bridge or I'm a lane on that path, and um, they have to go through the yellow brick road to get there. A lot of times I tell them that they already have it, they just need to go through it and get it. Kind of like the, is it the scarecrow that needed the, the degree to say, I have a brain? Mm -hmm. So, um, and every day I'm interacting with students and, and guiding them and being a positive influence in their life. And I, I know that. And, and um, I would say definitely I'm on a path, a good path. So obviously as a, as a mom, as a teacher, as a researcher, you've made impact on other people. So who's been influential to you to help you understand your own sense of self and call? Um, I would say, I would say it, 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 a lot of people along the way have supported me. I wouldn't be here without the support of my mother and father, um, and then the support of so many teachers. So much supportive people I probably didn't even know were supporting me in my corner. But when I think of the pivotal points, and um, there comes a time, and that's why I like teaching other students, because I think at this age they're at a pivotal point. And when they make those strong decisions, it's life changing. And uh, there was a professor, her name was Dr. Yackert, at the University of Louisville. And I was at a pivotal point of what to do in my career world. And I met with her, and she was amazing. And I, so I, 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 she, she was really helpful. And what was kind of interesting is um, I taught at Berea College with another colleague, and um, he had a lot of schools to choose from in graduate school. And um, he chose the same one I did, University of Louisville. And I said, why did you choose U of L? And he was like, well, because of Dr. Yapper. And so I noticed that Sometimes it's the same people that are influential in multiple people's lives. So I would say that was a, I, I wouldn't even have gone into um, master's and PhD in organic chemistry if it wasn't for that one afternoon, that one interaction with Dr. Yabber. So, and she was an analytical chemistry professor. <laughs> Just encouraging and showing, showing what opportunities are out there. Mm -hmm. And so I try to model her my students come to me. So, so if a person was watching us today and they said, oh, Dr. Thomas, you have my dream, right? Mm -hmm. You're just living it. What did you do to position yourself for this? Um, well, first I followed my heart and not my head. So what I mean by that is um, graduate school is a lot of hard work. Um, it's not it doesn't pay well, but it's definitely um, where my heart was at. And then I had to have a lot of faith and perseverance. And um, I remember even when I was writing my dissertation, and, and those were hard times, and especially after six years, and I thought about Jesus 40 days and 40 nights, and I would get a post-it note, because I believe in um, 
A checklist made in best of. So when you're down, you got to write a checklist. This person actually wrote like 200 pages on a checklist. I don't know about that, but um, every day I'd write day 39 and I'd have my checklist. I'd put it on my door. And then day 38, and I was like, I can do this 40 days. And um, so I would say persevere, have faith, encourage yourself, don't give up. Mm. So, follow your heart. Right. So when a student comes to you and Obviously, the science is so often you know, people who are, who are very ambitious and then maybe when they get into it, they say, oh, okay, well, I don't really know what I want to do. So when you have a student who comes in and says they have no idea what they, what they should do with their life, what advice do you have for them? Um, to take inventory. They um, need to think about what kind of daily tasks they enjoy, um, how they see themselves and who they are, the influences they can make in their lives. And um, not to worry about the money, because if you do what you love and you do a good job, the money, I think, will it'll be enough. I believe that. So 